Good morning, church. It's the season for polos again. Hey, I wanted to give you a, just a, a brief little lesson this morning. As I was reading through my next reading, I came across this verse. It was the first verse of my reading for today, and I thought it just contained something that um, I really like to make a comment on every time I get a chance to, and I think it's something that will encourage you for this day. It's in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, and immediately after chapter 7, that's the, se that's the chapter where Stephen gives his speech, the Sanhedrin hates it, and they kill him. The last line of chapter 7 is them killing Stephen. The first verse of chapter 8 actually begins mid-sentence with uh, Saul being the one who is observing and kind of approving of Stephen's death. But I want to pick it up at the first full sentence in chapter 8, verse 1. It says this, On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. This is the interesting point that I want to make. Luke does something in his text when he's writing the book of Acts that is easy to overlook. But you know how I like the details. This is one of those details. It's Acts 1-8. We just read Acts 8-1. But if you go over to Acts 1-8, you read this. Jesus had said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, Jesus had said they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria. That's an interesting turn of phrase. All Judea and Samaria. It's not treating Judea and Samaria as two different cities or two different regions. Judea is the physical area and Samaria is also the physical area of the same place. It's just that Judea refers to this physical area with regard to the Jews living in there. And Samaria is this physical area with the Samaritans living there. But Judea and Samaria is one big location. And so that's why Jesus says in Jerusalem, a specific city, and then in all Judea and Samaria, this larger region that involves multiple cultures, and then to the ends of the earth. But the phrase, all Judea and Samaria, is the key. Now, let me take you back to Acts 8, 1. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. What you find in 1, 8 is Jesus giving the disciples his command, his prediction that they're going to be witnesses in these specific ways. And then in chapter 8, verse 1, we get exactly the same thing just from a different angle. It's not a command. It's a description. In Acts 8.1, we are told that it happened. They were in Jerusalem, and then they went throughout Judea and Samaria. All Judea and Samaria. They haven't reached the ends of the earth. There was a hint at it, because at the earliest part of Acts chapter 8, verse 1, it was a, there was a mention about Saul, who later becomes the Apostle Paul, who later gets the gospel to the then-known ends of the world at the time. But this is the point that I want to make here for you today. It's that at this point in the story, Luke wants you to know something. He wants you to know that the command of Jesus to spread the message throughout all the earth is happening. It has reached phase two. It started in Jerusalem, and now it's reached phase two. Phase two is Jerusalem, and then all Judea and Samaria. Phase one was Jerusalem. Phase two is all Judea and Samaria. In chapter one, verse eight, the command is given. In chapter eight, verse one, it reaches its second phase. In other words, chapter eight, verse one, is a picture of, of Jesus' mission being carried forward. Isn't that an exciting thing to know? That Jesus' mission is being carried forward, progress is being made, we've reached phase two. There's just one minor problem. Chapter 8, verse 1, began with Saul watching over Stephen's death, 
And then on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church. There are two quick lessons I want to have for you on this. The first lesson is that for some reason it took a persecution to get the disciples, to get the early followers of Jesus, to move beyond Jerusalem. Jesus had said, you would be my witnesses in Jerusalem and then all Judea and Samaria, but they hadn't done it yet. Phase two didn't happen until the persecution came. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know if we should make any judgments about that or not. All I know is that it took hardship to push the church to its next phase. But here's the second lesson. Hardship pursued, hardship pushed the church to its second phase. I mean, that's a brilliant promise. That's, that's an amazing reality. That's something comforting. On the one hand, you can say, wow, it's so exciting that the church is reaching phase two. But then you begin to realize that it took a persecution to get them there. And then you begin to realize that, wait a minute, persecution can get us there. Right now, I'm imagining you're feeling like you are going through some sort of difficult time, even a persecution. Imagine that you're feeling like the church is going through a difficult time, even maybe a persecution. I'm imagining that you're feeling all kinds of feelings that are negative. And man, I wish things were different and I wish things could change. But I want to let you know, the Jesus who predicted the kingdom would come is the Jesus who uses persecution to make it happen. The Jesus who predicted the message would be spread is the Jesus who is not afraid to let hardship spread it. You might be going through some difficult stuff right now. I want to encourage you to rejoice in it. Because of our difficulty, we can reach level two. Whatever your next level is, it's going to come about because of this difficulty. If you are with Jesus in the midst of it, level two is going to happen. Just make sure you are with him in it and level two will happen. And then the other thing, of course, is that some of us need the hardship in order for level two to happen. If you don't need the hardship, all you have to do is pursue level two right now. What is God calling you to? Because maybe God can lead you to level two without hardship, but maybe God will use this hardship to lead you to level two. I'm not exactly sure what this all means for your particular circumstances, but I do want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to pursue that next level of relationship with Jesus, whatever it may look like for you. And to take comfort and confidence that just because hardship has entered into your life, that doesn't mean anything bad is happening to you. It means God is taking you to your next level. Let me pray for you. God, we ask that you would help us to reach our next level, that you would help us to be people who uh, embrace the difficulty and the hardship that you allow into our lives so that we can reach our next level with you. Father, we apologize for the times that we have required you to bring hardship into our lives for us to pursue our next level. But Lord, we thank you that you have a bigger purpose in mind for us than even we ourselves have. So Lord, would you lead us and guide us today? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day pursuing your next level.